All right. Welcome back, everyone. We are happy to introduce our next presenter. We have Premium Products Group, Inc. It trades on the OTC under the symbol PMPG and engages in acquiring technology companies, developing smart roads and smart city infrastructures. We are welcoming Jeff Brooks, Chief Revenue and Marketing Officer of Premium Products Group. Welcome, Jeff Anna, thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to uh, participate in today's conference. I think to start this off, we've created a, a short video that gives you an idea of who we are, what we do, and why we think we matter uh, to the uh, emerging uh, smart in infrastructure industry. So without ado, let me start playing this video. PMPG. I'm joined by my colleague and CEO, uh, Tony Hicks. Uh, what we'd now like to do is uh, take you through, hopefully that preview, you found that preview engaging and gave you a glimpse in, uh, of what we're up to and why we're here today. So again, without further ado, let me, uh, uh, let me commence this presentation again. Um, as we present this, this is our little safe harbor statement. You know, the documents in the presentation may continue forward-looking statements. These statements relate to future events or PMPG's future financial performance. Any statements are not statements of historical fact, including without limitation statements to the effect that the company uh, or its management believes, expects, anticipates plans or similar expressions should be considered forward-looking statements. There are other number of important factors that could cause PMPG's actual results to differ material from those indicated in what we'll be presenting. Uh, and it's PMPG disclaims any obligation to update any forward-looking statement. Now that we're through with that, I'd like to go directly into uh, our presentation about PMPG and our very, our excitement with the world of smart infrastructure and smart cities. First, a little on PMPG. Premier Products Group is a publicly uh, traded a trading holding company dedicated to acquiring or developing joint ventures with leading technology companies. We, we actually hold uh, two strategic business units, one in technology solutions and then the other in 5G infrastructure. Uh, the company itself, just to give you a quick pre preview, you know, has the standard governance of board of directors, executive committee. Uh, to give you an idea of what that structure looks like, that's PMPG. Our executive committee, we pull finance out of our executive committee um, uh, organization because it holds a special place because as I go in and start discussing smart infrastructure and smart cities, that group will be in charge of uh, 
identifying opportunities that uh, we can help finance, especially in the area of smart cities, where we can finance the uh, initial deployment of the, the smart city uh, through the management and coordination of road construction bonds. Um, the smart, smart technology or smart uh, infrastructure business we call Smart Road Turtle. That's headed up by Terrence Burry. We also have a 5G smart infrastructure uh, group that's headed up by Greg Goulas. Um, again, standard structure for a holding company with a board executive committee. You can see we have strategic business units. All of them are, are accountable to the executive committee and then the operating companies underneath them hold uh, core functional capabilities, meeting both the revenue and P&L objectives. But to jump into PMPG, uh, we view ourselves as the gateway to smart cities and smart infrastructure. We view it that way because we hold 22 patents that are registered in 31 countries uh, that are all about the sensors and the communications technology that will drive um, the digitization of roads, uh, highways, and pathways. Um, we're so confident of these that we're, we're already uh, we're already in a position to know that uh, much of the technology and what our patents hold already is being infringed upon by 5G. But it's not our intent to pursue a legal strategy on this, rather a partnership strategy. We believe that that will accelerate the uh, uh, growth and the opportunity uh, to really achieve the full potential of the market. As I noted, when you look at our, our 22 patents, they're really about tra transforming paved surfaces to create smart highways in cities because we deliver wireless communications in on or near any paved surface or reflector. And that opens up uh, our, uh, our activities to autonomous driving, internet of things. We try to keep it simple, traffic light management, but it's much more than that. Mobile data, out of home and in vehicle advertising, security, uh, very much around uh, road, road toll collections, more to come on that. And then smart city connected commerce. Uh, this briefly, I'll go briefly over just some of the patents that we have. They're all about uh, capturing and communicating data from the road or ref reflective surfaces. Um, we can take you uh, from this presentation in greater detail in all the patents, um, but they are pretty much international patents as we have them filed uh, in 32 different countries. And you can see here that our filings reach into Mexico, Canada, Australia, the, the EU, Colombia, Hong Kong, um, uh, Japan, India, and Germany. So we think we have really good coverage. But to get to the heart of what our solutions address, uh, I, I wanna share this visual that's about our core monitoring solutions. So our technology, we refer to a smart road turtle, um, comes from, uh, is derived from the reflectors that you see on the road. Uh, as we all drive in, in, in our communities and into our offices, we see either yellow, sometimes red, and blue reflectors. They're just passive reflectors. The industry, the road construction industry, refers to those as turtles. They're kind of there. They're, they're uh, very uh, impact resilient, et cetera. We're going to take those reflectors that are dumb and we're going to make them interactive. And in fact, the reflectors that we call IRPMs or intelligent road pavement markers uh, hold sensors. Each one will hold somewhere between seven and 11 sensors. And it's our intent to, to select and build solutions around uh, a panoply of over 13,000 sensors that are available to drive solutions to the marketplace. So what are those solutions? As you see on this slide, a slide uh, there are around four key areas. One is emergency and safety management. So we're gonna be right at the heart of advanced traffic, traffic alerts, 
providing, we like to refer, refer to it as smart road turtle or SRT alerts from crash, EMT and Amber alerts. Because we're, we're when our uh, intelligent road pavement markers are placed into the road and they would use the same process that's used now for the passive or the, you know, kind of the reflectors, uh, they, they take their position every 80 feet within, that, within the roadway. So we're able to expand or contract uh, a field of view that our reflectors have and the information that it's sending uh, so that we can do, again, all this advanced monitoring, crash alerts, and an advanced traffic and lighting adaptation. Uh, the second area, and this is what we see that cities are very interested in, is traffic monitoring. Because we have both the preview of what the road's going to look like for the driver, driver, and we have kind of the post view, what's behind them, we can do things such as manage a passenger and commercial vehicle, traffic and congestion. We can manage for industries like uh, uh, the out-of-home advertising industry, um, commercial real estate development industry, uh, counts, directions, and time of day. Clearly, uh, for cities that we would work with, we're going to be really focused around safety. So we'll be able to mount and monitor speeds, drivers staying in lanes, and proximity to one another. The fourth core solution is around road management. As I noted, because our intelligent road pavement markers have sensors, we're going to be able to sense things such as road temperature, advanced motion detection, uh, to know if there's you know, a, a problem as a, as a vehicle hits a corner, uh, that we can both uh, send messages, um, that we can send messages themselves to the vehicle itself to slow down or to know that there's a problem ahead. We can do crash notification and road condition alerts. That'll be real important to states, municipalities, and cities to really maintain roads. And then lastly, and we think most excitedly, is automated driving platforms. Uh, we, we view uh, smart, you know, our smart road turtles as an ind indispensable link to the autonomous or fully autonomous industry uh, where uh, we will assist with GPS and navigation, where we'll enhance semi and autonomous uh, uh, driving. Uh, roadway tax collection, we think will be a big area as we move from fossil fuels uh, to electrified cars, the smart road turtle will be able to monitor literally every car on the road and provide the states and cities an alternate way of collecting taxes uh, that, that's not tied to a fuel pump. And then literally a technology that we employ called V2X or vehicle to everything will allow us to have enhanced rich data and communications uh, interactions between uh, cars, um, destinations, etc. So that gives you a, a, a brief glimpse of the solutions we're driving. Um, from uh, an investment point of view and a market point of view, um, this gives you an idea of the size of markets. All of this has been uh, gained from third-party source. Uh, mobile city data, who, who are projecting that by 2025, the global market for smart cities will be $2.46 trillion. In the U.S., that will be $326 billion. And the activities we're doing around, uh, you know, our investment fundraising is to really capture by 2025 over $200 million, and that's just for one leading city. Oops. Um, as I noted before, autonomous vehicles plays at the heart or one of the critical hearts of our strategy. Um, and uh, I think it's important to share with you the impact that we already view that our technology brings. Uh, right now, the uh, National Highway Safety Administration uh, has designated there, that there are six, because it starts with zero, six stages to fully autonomous driving. If we look at Tesla, who is actually state of the art in terms of autonomous driving, they're at conditional autonomous. They're at level three. 
Um, you know, we know uh, we all are more than aware of some of the issues that uh, relate to uh, conditions and, and cars veering off an autonomous path. Well, we're, we're confident that our technology is ready today, and that's what part of our part of the investment in PMPG and Smart Road Turtle will do is to deliver that full uh, uh, level five, full autonomous driving experience because we're fully rich. And in fact, uh, our strategy, quite frankly, will be to integrate, as I noted, we can censor up these intelligent road pavement markers, these IRPM, we would load one of in, in sensors, one of the sensors that we would load into our uh, hardware side of the equation would be a LiDAR device. So instead of LiDAR being lodged and fixed to a car, which has limited view, you know, uh, maybe 600 feet on a very clear day, uh, we would be able to have the view literally every 80 feet from where uh, we're embedded. So we'll be able to richly provide data back to the vehicle at a range that can, quite frankly, be set by uh, the driver themselves or by the vehicle manufacturer to really expand that field of vision, um, that radar field and laser field of vision uh, to provide a notification uh, to the car to, to, to manage maximum safety uh, conditions. Hey, hey, Jeffrey, can I add a little bit to that? Sure. This is Tony that would like to chime in. Go ahead, Tony. Hi, this is Tony, ex CEO. So, also, I'd like to add what Jeffrey uh, eloquently just said that the road markers or road turtles can we can set it to go uh, one mile ahead around the bend on a bridge. So, that car, that specific car uh, uh, with this AI in that car, can know that there's ice on the road on a bridge that's a mile ahead. To the right, down the down the and, and down the hill. So that's what's exciting about these road markers. They're they're every 80 feet. So every car can see well behind a human uh, mind can see. Thanks. Go ahead. Yep, my pleasure. Uh, to to give you uh, a, a little more on the uh, technical grounding around uh, uh, our solutions, uh, the Smart Road Turtle itself is designed around infrastructure and partnerships created, dedicated to create real-time data, intelligence, safety service solutions to governments, transportation industries, and the users they serve. Um, if we break it down, our smart road turtle senses, it monitors. We are con The turtle itself is connected or the intelligent road pavement marker is con connected uh, to a, a PC controller that's embedded uh, into or in or under the highway that does measurement. We do preliminary analysis of that data. We send it in real time and apply some artificial intelligence algorithms that go out and solve these real problems that Tony indicated, that, that collision around the bend, that icy surface, et cetera. So we then solve uh, problems. Clearly, we can't do the solution alone, and we know that, so we're building our software architecture and framework to work with leading data sources from other third parties so that it's very rich and ultimately uh, can monetize these solutions for all. Uh, all of this is underpinned by the importance that we see with data. I could read these to you, but uh, uh, as one of the companies that we're already engaging with, Microsoft has said uh, so eloquently, data is the new oil. Um, within our own pro forma, um, uh, for the company, there are 10 markets that we're, uh, that we're focused on as the top revenue producers. Clearly, the, the states, counties, and municipal road construction business itself is the largest market. We go from there to the package delivery uh, companies. There's, there's about 3,000 that are in package delivery and trucking. We, we see 300 driving, driving the move towards uh, automation uh, and, and autonomous driving. Uh, one of the markets we also see uh, that will abundantly serve with our solutions is the U.S. auto insurance industry. Right now, there's 3,600 adjusters throughout the U.S. Uh, claims adjustment is a real uh, 
people intense, labor intense business. We believe that uh, with our AI uh, and in automation, we can automate the claims process so that uh, since we're capturing all the information about the vehicle, where it is, when it is, uh, the other vehicles that may be involved in, uh, in a crash or accident, we can in effect pre-fill uh, in our estimation of approximately 85% of the data that's uh, required with the only gap being kind of the medical part uh, to, com to commence claims adjustments. So we think we'll speed that process up and potentially reduce labor from that. Uh, in the U.S. commercial real estate development market, we see that as a big one. Instead of having approximate traffic and vehicle counts, we'll have exact counts. We'll, we'll have it literally by day part or time of day. Uh, because one of the sensors that will be in the smart road turtle or the intelligent road pavement marker will be a video sensor. Uh, we'll be picking up the license plate of the car. Therefore, we'll link that to the U.S. auto registration database. That will tell us the demography of the drivers going by. And we know that for the real estate uh, development industry, that's everything they can figure out than locations of everything from strip malls to fast food franchises, et cetera, uh, with real time, very rich data. Uh, clearly, the Department of Transportation, Homeland Security, Energy, and FEMA will use the data not only to plan uh, activities, but more importantly, plan disbursement of dollars. And we'll get into the Biden infrastructure disbursement of dollars that will be required to the states. Uh, to, to improve roads and build new roads. And in the area of both DOE and FEMA, really how to use uh, our technology to more smartly and quickly respond to uh, natural disasters or emergency situations because they'll have real-time data that they can act upon. That same real-time data will be available to third-party delivery companies and rideshare companies. Um, will improve their routing, provide alternatives, et cetera. We'll also be able to help track the assets that they're carrying. Uh, we'll improve global digital out-of-home and programmatic advertising as the as out-of-home advertising moves to the more uh, digital billboards and screens. We'll be able to sense literally down to a car if that's what's required. Uh, the demography, the anticipated demography of uh, driver and passengers in that car and drive an advertising stream to those boards. We'll help the outdoor industrial power supply company uh, understand where to place their, their transformers and power supply uh, solutions. Uh, most importantly, we'll Im impact the GIS, whether that is and geospatial analytic services, whether that's happening via drones, whether that's happening via our own internal LIDAR, LIDAR, whether that's happening by satellite, we'll be able to provide, again, a rich data stream um, to uh, improve uh, their measurement and their services. Coupled together, we see, we see our own movement towards the 3D spatial uh, towards 3D spatial web solutions that ultimately at the end will give global, the global auto industry and data solutions providers the rich data they need uh, to make the driving experience more pleasurable and considerably safer. Uh, all of this is then under, underpinned by our technology. This is our technology stack. Um, I'll try to be reasonably brief on this. Uh, there's a, there's multiple there's multiple layers. You can think of those as kind of four layers of the stack. A hardware layer, uh, you see that where it says SRT IRPM. Those are the reflectors that you see today. Ours will be these in, intelligent reflectors, and in fact, we're looking at designs that will uh, build on what we're used to today in our static reflectors. That will have an LED light that will be yellow when conditions are good, turn to red or flashing red when there's an emergency on the road, or turn to blue if we know that the police or EMT uh, need to, to be in an area and then we can pre-warn drivers. Clearly, we'll build custom sensors for very specific applications to industries. Uh, our sensors themselves not only will go on the road, but any place that there is a road or 
uh, reflective sign, we'll be able to put our markers there. So we're not uh, uh, restricted or limited to road placement. And then we'll have, again, this controller that will be the grabber of the data from uh, the, the road pavement marker that send via Wi-Fi to the controller. And then the controller uses all the network technology. So you can just view that middle that middle layer around networking communications is different ways uh, we're able to float our signal out to our to the controller and then from the controller to a cell phone tower or a satellite to get the data up to uh, up to the cloud where we'll capture the data we'll analyze it we'll have this api layer that will blend and merge it with other data sources and a data virtualization layer that will send information so that people and drivers, et cetera, consume, can consume it in simple, impactful ways. All of this will be undergirded, as you see on the side, by security from privacy all the way up through authentication to the right. And therefore, at the end of the day, we see ourselves delivering solutions around smart driving, smart cities, emergency, emer emergency and safety, smart road traffic management, We'll be able to manage to measure CO2 in the air. So we think we'll have a major impact, especially uh, for uh, ESG um, directed uh, investments, et cetera, custom applications. And then uh, in cities, smart, smart traffic light systems and transit. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, as as I noted, we have an, uh, our own API that's already built out. That API allows third parties. Here we're showing uh, what that the, that API looks like on the Azure cloud. Clearly, we're in talks and then working with the other major cloud providers uh, to offer again very um, very enriched data sets that uh, all those key targets can use. Um, to give you an idea of, uh, of the smart city aspect that was previewed in the video that was shown at the commencement of the conference, this gives you an idea of how powerful we think for, as a revenue model, both to us and cities, uh, the PMPG smart road turtle uh, solutions can be. As an example, with the city of Dallas, uh, we would be able to drive to the city of Dallas on an annual basis uh, data revenues in, in excess of $52 million, cost about $39 million to deploy the system. So we think it kind of at the end of one full operating year, uh, we'll be able to ultimately help uh, fully pay for a deployment of smart road turtle solutions uh, and, and and the cloud deployment to support that uh, by, dri by driving very significant revenues. Needless to say, they would get right now our, our performance shell itself and in, in anticipates about a 20% cut of total revenues for us. That is just what would go to the city. So our revenues are substantially higher. Um, as I noted earlier, what we see and what's being uh, forecasted by the Department of Transportation is a migration from collecting taxes uh, at the pump uh, where gas, you know, where gas is pumped, uh, to collecting taxes on the road. Our smart road turtles are built for that. We would develop a solution around that, customized for each city and municipality. In the case of Dallas, that would generate from commercial vehicles about forty-five million dollars, forty-five and a half million dollars. In terms of residential vehicles, about $45 million. The other thing that we'll be able to do is help offset uh, police department uh, costs by being able to be the, uh, the eyes of um, the police department. We'll be able to know where speeding is taking place, where accidents have, have occurred, where lane shifting is taking place to point the assets of the police department at the right place, to augment their intelligence, and again, help write up their reports. Uh, the way PMPG uh, works, again, um, towards the deployment of a smart city is to leverage our, our, our patents to create partnerships that scale. So when we work with the city, it's all about licensing 
our IP part portfolio and patents to the city. We work with them to construct through our design services, uh, partnering, partnering with the major road construction companies, uh, the design and build out um, a censored city. We help in the operations management and the deployment uh, of our solutions. And then our software is clearly the, the mainstream of our revenues and clearly what drives a revenue share stream. Uh, we set that up and provide analytics. Therefore, we engage with the city. We move down the path to license that with the city. We work with them to become a smart city. Uh, and then the smart city itself uh, is in the position uh, to have revenue streams. Needless to say, when we engage the city, if they note an alternative technology, if we believe they're um, um, in conflict with our patents, we'll advise them of that. But as I've said, our our real strategy is to deploy smart cities and not to litigate. Correct. Um, um, this gives you an idea of the process we go through. We engage the city and we sign an agreement. We either see that they have funds to deploy our full solution or we help them float a bond. Uh, we deploy and build out the infrastructure. We move into operations management. And then the most, again, impactful and important thing is around data analytics. For a smart city itself, what we deliver is truly transformative. We deliver new, new city services. Uh, improve service quality at reduced cost. We introduce innovative uh, smart road intelligence services that we've gone through through our in intelligent signs, markers, et cetera. Uh, we accelerate and permit that level four, level five autonomous driving that I covered earlier in the presentation. We manage for the city itself what everyone, you know, as we all uh, when we all need to engage in a city, we manage traffic flow. We can help manage congestion and clearly routing. Uh, we enhance both the safety for the vehicle and for pedestrians. We improve fire, police, EMT response times. And at the heart of this, we're, we're further responsive in supporting uh, not only current construction, but future construction and repair management. We think we're extremely well positioned uh, to take advantage of the uh, proposed $2 trillion infrastructure plan, uh, and we're actively engaging cities to do that now. So that's the core of, uh, that's the core of our presentation. Um, we'd like to, if there's any questions, we'd, uh, we'd like to open it up. Um, and both my, and myself and Tony, uh, uh, we'll entertain what you'd like to uh, what what you'd like to question. Thank you, Jeffrey. That was very well done. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great presentation. Thank you, Jeff. And hi, Tony. Um, hi. We have we have lots of questions for you, and we're going to send them all to you in an email because we got to move on to our next presentation. But we will send them all to you so you can answer directly. And we really enjoyed this presentation. Hope you join us again so we can yeah. get this awareness out to all the people, all of our viewers out there today. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. We look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Okay, everyone, remember, you're going to experience a black screen for just a brief moment as we move on to our next presenter. But stay with us. We'll be right back.